left, right, straight, back, watch this, watch that. You wanna drive? <laughs> Alright guys, we're starting to vlog at Ikea and we just ate and we were, update, we were going to look for couches but now I'm just going to hold off on that because I can't find anything that I like and I don't want to rush to get something so I'm just going to use the couch that I have at my apartment now and then I'll slowly ease into finding a nice couch but today we're going to look for a dining set, a dresser and a table for David, a desk gaming table but we have other places to stop by and i'll take you guys along with me all right so we found the pre-cut wood pre-cut wood countertops for a possible table for david but we really like this one this walnut color the oak is a little bit lighter i don't know if it's transferring well on camera and i always say that but this dark one is really really nice yeah. wait what, what's the one underneath this one huh oh that's a different one but I, we like this dark one. one. Yeah, pretty nice. So we found the table that David wanted, or like the style. So he wants the wood that I showed you before. He wants that long piece on top and then rested on the, the Alex drawers. I was telling him that the Alex drawers are very well known in the makeup world. So I might want to use one side. Can I use one of these drawers? It'll be used for both your gaming and my makeup stuff. No. All right, we're leaving. We left IKEA already, and we just went to one stop, one place, and that was already stressful. But not for me. Nah. I mean, it doesn't take a lot for me to get stressed or anxious. Now we're just gonna stop by Crate and Barrel and Pottery Barn because I still want to look at dining sets. I just want to like finalize on something. But we did buy a few things at IKEA, so I'll show you when when we get home. Just like maybe two things that we really wanted. And yeah, I'll show you guys at the next stop. It's our first time here at the container store. I know I'm such a noob. It's my first time here, but it's so fun to look at. There's so many things that I want, so many things. They are kind of expensive, but they have everything here, everything. So David saw this and got super excited because he said he saw it on Shark Tank. I don't remember what it does though. I don't know, I don't know why it was so good. I don't know, he got really excited though. It says soft and warm water and firm and cool water. Oh, look, look, you could feed it the spoon. <laughs> <laughs> and show them how you can hold it. Why, what, what, why it was made. Oh, okay, that's a little scary and creepy, but that's actually pretty cool. Maybe we'll try one. We walked in and we saw this couch. Ugh. It's a small sectional, which is great for our apartment size, but we just, we're, we just decided that we're gonna keep our old couch and I am looking at covers for the couch new covers for the couch and I just got an ottoman today that matches it so goodbye oh my god my, cr my, not my crack addiction oh my gosh you can't see that this oh. I need this $2,000? Baby, that's $2,000. Sheesh! A couch or a special machine? I really like this table. I think it's a, maybe a tad bit too long for our dining area, but I really like it. I like the bench as well. I like the color of the wood. This one's a prospect. So we came about across this couch and ottoman with tray with a tray inside there. Super, super nice. Yeah, you wanna show them? This is like one thing we agreed on because we like the depth of this couch and the width is actually perfect for our new apartment. Wow. That's pretty cool. That was a plus because we didn't even know. We thought it was just a storage ottoman. We just thought it was like a table ottoman or we try to put it and make it a sectional, which wasn't bad either. Very, very convenient. I like this a lot. We weren't even looking for couches, but David sat here and he was like, holy, super nice. Really, really love it. So we were actually going to skip over Ashley Furniture, but I'm so glad we didn't because this table is like almost a replica of the one that I saw at West Elm. And this comes with the chairs, which is a beautiful shade of like, you can't see like a taupe gray. And it comes with the bench too. And I, I don't know, I'm like, completely debating 
whether or not we want to put it in this order, but this is one of our top choices today, for sure. Jake shot break, shroom burger, cheese fries. We just got back from Ashley Furniture and I'm, I want that dining table, but we just have to be patient and look at the dimensions when we get to our apartment. So, oh my gosh, this cheese, look at it, coagulated. It's supposed to be like cheese fries, but it's like, we were gonna go to Pottery Barn, but forget it. I'm like so tired. I get so like impatient and tired and I don't, I'm not bragging about that, but David's much better about it. We were gonna go to Hobby Lobby. I've never been there either. Container store was the first time too. David's so patient and such a good sport. He's like, you wanna go in? I'm like, no, I'll see you guys at home. All right, hey guys, sorry, I didn't update that much this weekend. It was pretty crazy. So I'm actually filming on my day off today. So the last time you guys saw, we, David and I went to a bunch of furniture stores. Um, I was really tired by the end. As you could tell, I was just like eating and like dozing off at Shake Shack. But I just wanted to chat a little bit while I'm packing a few things. Um, so we left off on Friday when I was off on that day too. I'm gonna insert a photo here. We got our Harlanda Ottoman, which is, it's a different name, but we, I have the Gronlid Ikea couch, but I guess they changed their name to Harlanda. I, I, it's like very similar. I'll put pictures up here. But I got the Ottoman, um, the Harlanda Ottoman, and then David got his two small Alexa drawers, which I was saying we're familiar with because a lot of makeup artists have that drawer, but he's gonna use it as um, stands for his table, his desk. So we're just gonna get that wooden piece for his makeshift table. I asked on Instagram um, like a Q&A and I had a few people respond so I'll be doing that as I'm packing. So the first question was, how are you? Which was so sweet by Dev. Of course, Dev won't ask me something so sweet. I'm okay. Um, just taking it day by day, right? Um, amidst the news and um, the Asian hate crimes and all of that, it is very heavy. Uh, it's scary. It does get me angry, especially when I think about my parents and um, the elderly community and um, you know I wrote this on Instagram but every day I'm always warning my parents to be safe not to walk alone I tell my dad not to be confrontational my dad is a big guy I mean I'm 5'9 so you can imagine how tall my dad was before he got a little older and shrank a little bit but my dad is a big guy um, when he was younger he was training for the Olympics so he's very built um, but he didn't enter the Junior Olympics because he came to America and that's you know to marry my mom but anyway so he's just physically you know very strong very tough personality is the same and I always tell him don't my sisters and I all tell him don't try to be confrontational or stick up for yourself or stand up for yourself and as much as I hate saying that to him it's true I'm like no weapon you can stand against you can't stand against the weapon you know so swallow your pride you know your safety comes first so it's been tough for me because of them. You know, for myself, I always feel like I couldn't stick up for myself and stand up for myself. <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, other than that, I've been okay. Work has been okay. I don't know if I... I I'm pretty sure I've told you guys, but I work um, in, the, in the health field. I'm a vascular ultrasound tech, so my job is great. I have no complaints. Um, I actually love what I do. I probably see myself doing this for the rest of my life past retirement. It's a, it's a very stress-free job and I'm very happy with where I am. Um, at one point I wanted to see if I can do content creating fully. I don't know what I was thinking because that's a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work and you need a lot of motivation for that but um, I don't think I have not, I mean I'll be really honest, I feel like every content creator would love to do this full time but I don't think they realize how much work really goes into it. You. You know, people get burnt out so quickly and with, with content creating, I feel like being burnt out, yes, it happens, but it's not truly an option. You know, but this is where you're, that's your, gonna be your career. That's where all the funds are gonna come in, you know, your finances. So I don't know, that was a tough call to make. So um, anyways, I'm, I'm digressing. Someone asked, how do you prioritize work, content creating, life, and etc.? cetera? Um, I'm an extrovert. 
So I will prioritize meeting my friends over anything else. So if they say, hey, we, you want to meet up this weekend? I will make plans around that because everyone's life is so busy. You know, as we get older, I'm 33, so I'm going to be 34. As our lives, as we get older, our lives just get more busy and complicated. So if the five of us can find a day and time to meet, I will work around that because that's such a rare occasion. And I love meeting my girlfriends. I love seeing what they have to say about their lives, but also their insight into my life. Um, another, another tangent is growing up, I would have like, I would meet some girls that would always say, you know, I have more guy friends because I don't, I don't really have a lot of girlfriends. They just don't like me. And now I see it as, you know, oftentimes girls don't like constructive criticism from other girls, you know? Guys don't do that, so it's just easier to hang out with guys, you know? There's just more chill, more lax, no drama, which is true. But I feel like if you have a good group of girlfriends, you're supposed to hone each other, you're supposed to help each other. Now, there are girls that are just a bit more malicious and, and jealous and just kind of mean, but that's when you're growing up, you know? As you get older, you'll find your group of girlfriends that will help you and help you grow and, you know, um, correct you in areas that you're not doing well in. You know, that's what friendship really is supposed to be. And so I think a good group of girlfriends is very important. That's how you grow. You know, they're not always just going to tell you all the good stuff. They're, they should be telling you the areas that you lack in um, if they really care about you and they love you. So that is how I prioritize my life, you know, often because, like I said, I'm an extrovert. So I like to go out. I like to have those moments where I can just talk about life with my girlfriends. Weekends, now, weekends are the time where I vlog or I YouTube. Uh, I try not to let that overtake everything though because I still want to have a social life on the weekends. But uh, Kevin, my very good friend and my editor, has been such a good partner through all this. I call him my work husband. Um, I vlog on the weekends, but he says, you know, don't push it. If you're not feeling it one day, just do it the next day. You have some leeway. So he's been so good about it. Um, so he's kind of been my, my motivation and like the push in the right direction for YouTube and vlogging and things like that. I don't put content creating first, to be really honest, for the sake of my sanity. And I'm not all about I'm not 100% self-care. That's just not how... I'm not bashing anyone that wants to do it, like, thinks that way, but that's just not how I roll. I, I think there has to be some moderation. Um, me, I feel like once I get too much into self-care, I become a little selfish because that's just kind of my personality. I'm very extreme in that sense. So I do take self-care uh, in moderation. And so, yeah, so content creating, I, I, if I have to push back a little bit, I will for the sake of not letting my social life, you know, diminish. But I think I prioritize it well. All right, someone else asked, what are some of your hobbies? <laughs> Besides like eating like a maniac, I literally love, like, I love to eat. But one of my hobbies is really just trying new foods. I like order and try new, new restaurants popping up, new places that are opening up. And I'm like, we need to try that. And when I look at the menu, I, I try to be very efficient with the menu. I will order this many dishes on the side. These are the main meals, but I'll get this one. So you get this one so we can try each other's and we don't double up the order. Um, I don't even know if that's really a hobby, but yeah, I like trying new foods. I, I'm a foodie. I really like to try different things. Um, but if you're talking about like a specific hobby that I have or like to do, that's a little bit unique. Um, I think I've shared this with you guys. I like to sing. I, well, before COVID, karaoke was like such a thing. Karaoke, prime time hours on the weekend was like 10 o'clock. If you ever go to the Korean karaoke, it's like you go at like 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night and you just stay there for hours with your friends, eat, drink, good times. My favorite karaoke song is Let It Go by from Frozen. We had a competition at our workplace for the first time in 2019. At my hospital, we had like the, like a huge talent show. And I'm pretty shy when it comes to that. So I was like, I'm not gonna do it. I don't feel like doing it. But then there was an incentive. First place gets $1,000, second place was like 750, and third place was 500. So I'm like, all right, there's an incentive. There's some real cash value. So I'm like, what do I have to lose? Get out there, get out of your comfort zone, and 
go for the kill. Anyways, I auditioned and I made it. I made the cut. So there was like 12 finalists and um, I went to the competition. I was like so nervous. I sang If I Ain't Got You by Alicia Keys. And long story short, I won second place. $750 from my company. Thank you very much. So then I got like a little boost of confidence. I'm like, ooh, this is fun. Like I should really be more daring because I was so shy growing up. I was like, I should be more daring and like do what I love. Someone asked, do you, someone asked, do you ever want to live somewhere else? Yes and no. I honestly do love the fact that I am close to New York City. So I'm actually in Jersey, but I'm literally just across the bridge. And I love New York. I really do primarily for the food and I love the seasons. I love all four seasons that we have. I went to grad school in Florida and as great as that was, just sunshine and never guessing on the weather every day, I don't think I could, well, I knew I didn't want to live there. Like I need my seasons. Maybe I can see myself living in California. I mean, it's like a topic David talks about all the time, but I don't know, family and friends are here so I can't see myself leaving. I do have family in California, my sister my oldest sister, but like, I don't know, everything is here. One more question, um, what does your monthly skincare budget look like and your favorite skincare places to shop? So before I got into skincare, I'll be really honest, I was spending like thousands of dollars a year. And the reason why I know that is because every year I made it to the Sephora Rouge, like above and beyond. And then Ulta, I would always make it, what was it, Diamond? I forget what it was, but that was when you spent a few hundred dollars too. So I know I was spending at least, you know, 2000 a year for makeup and skincare, which is not really hard to do if you like the nice higher end skincare. Like one one bottle of serum can be close to $100 if you like the nice pricey ones from like, I don't know, Torwasu and um, Amore Pacific. So it's not that hard to spend that much. But once I got into Instagram, I don't think I spend much money at Sephora, maybe a couple hundred dollars. Ulta, maybe a couple hundred as well. So my budget obviously changed. I just think that if you're spending money on skincare, you don't need 10 products of each thing, you know? Um, I, I really do try not to be wasteful, so I give away a lot of products. But if I had to start all over again with my money, I don't think I would keep more than like two toners, two essence, two serums. Budget according to what you think and what your finances are. I can't, you know, all our finances are a little bit different, but I do feel like Sephora and Ulta are like the one-stop shops for me. Um, everywhere else, like, what is it, Blue Blue Mercury and Credo? Credo? The, I don't have a lot of those around here. I would love to shop there um, more often, but it's not around me here. Sephora and Ulta is really the best way to go for me, so that's where I like to shop the most. Um, especially Ulta because they give you the points back and that's like cash, so not sponsored. I'm just saying it's just easier at Ulta because instead of Sephora samples, you actually get like Ulta points and money back. Anyways, so here's the update. It is Tuesday, March 23rd. I am moving in, moving in exactly one week, March 30th. I will be vlogging that day. It's gonna be chaos, but I will be vlogging that day and showing you the empty apartment. So I'll be vlogging pretty much every time um, I'm in the new apartment. So I'll see you guys then. I cannot wait to show you guys um, the way I just organize and clean everything out. So thank you for coming along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. Love you guys. I'll see you next time. <laughs>